Well, praise the Lord. It's good to be back again another Thursday evening. I'm glad each and every one of you is here. I'd like to welcome the Trucker's Prayer Line and all those wherever you are throughout this world, what little uh, part of the world you're in. You're definitely welcome here. My name's Steve, and I'm the doorman for the Lord's Roundtable. And the door is open, and you're all welcome to come in. I'm kind of excited tonight, uh, a little bit more than kind of excited. Uh, we have a brother with us that most of you probably know. Uh, especially those that are listening through Spreaker Radio and iHeart and all that kind of stuff. And, you know, he introduced me to uh, this avenue of uh, ministry. And so uh, kind of run in the same circles there a little bit. So uh, I'm just uh, delighted to introduce our brother, Greg Martin. And you know him from Smokehouse Studios. And, uh, Greg, we're excited about what you have for us here tonight. So, brother, I ain't going to waste no time. I'm just going to turn it right over to you, and we're going to sit back and enjoy what you got for us. All right, my friend. Well, let's uh, let's everybody bow our head, and uh, let's say an opening prayer, and we'll uh, we'll get the show on the road. Father, we come to you at this time, and we're so thankful and grateful that you've given us this avenue, this technology, to unite together in a world that's so divided to come together and share a little bit of your word, a little bit of your message, a little bit of your warning. And, Father, a whole lot of comfort that you that you give to those who, who are believers. And so, Father, tonight we want to repent of our sins. We want to be clean. We want to approach the throne white as snow so that, so that we can be in unity with you. We thank you for all the faith travels that not only us as drivers have done but our friends and our family as well as they as they run these nation's highways and father we're just mere days away from uncertainty and we just lay it at your feet we put it in your hands father it'll be your will we pray that you give us wisdom discernment understanding and we just ask for a blanket of protection to be laid over us and our family. Father, we pray all these things in your son's name, Jesus. Amen. Well, friends, as Steve was telling you, uh, my name is Greg, and I'm uh, owner, owner uh, operator of uh, Smokehouse Studios. And I first would like to thank uh, the iHeart listeners that are here on the uh, prayer line, the Lord's Round Table, and uh, Christian Truckers Network, because uh, I also uh, share the podcast on this network as well, on uh, Spreaker, iHeart, Tune, uh, all of the other networks that uh, are all affiliated with this. So I want to thank each and every one of you listeners, because uh, you don't know what it means. Uh Although I have, you know, my own broadcast on, on my own channels, uh, we have united with Steve and Todd in the group and uh, sharing ideas. But you, the, the listener, have no idea what a blessing it is to have you apart. And I just, I want to thank you. I, I try to thank my listeners as much as I can, but I also now want to thank you as well because, um, it's a little disheartening to do what we do in a worldly view with the battles that we have to to battle and uh, the time that it takes to do these these type of things and and we've been doing it so long that at times you know we're human we we wear down and um, it's just it's just so warming to know that the listeners are out there and the messages that we get the emails that we get uh, it is. You know, we could have a hundred people laughing at us, criticizing us, and just have that one person shoot one simple email that says, thanks for what you do, and and it changes our entire day. I mean, it's just amazing what one little glimpse of light can do in darkness. So I want to thank you uh, all for tuning in and listening. Well, folks, I had a interesting little deal happened to me today without going into the detail 
But a phrase, a verse in the Bible that I have known my entire life out of uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 20, um, I saw it today, and I put a post up on Facebook, and it says, It's time to man up, church, and be bold. Do not fear this evil. The truth is now being revealed, and I, I shared Matthew ten twenty nine. Not one sparrow falls to the ground outside of the will of God. And that got me to thinking. Let me get you caught up to where I am at so that you will have an understanding of where we're about to go. There are parallels in, in life, in history. We can go back and read world history or biblical history, and there's a repetitive pattern. History repeats itself. The Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes 1.9 that what's been done will be done again. What's happened will happen again. There's nothing new under the sun, and this is so true. And in the ancient, ancient of days, the kings and the pharaohs would start telling their people to act a certain way, which would be to turn their backs on God, start worshiping idols, uh, basically everything that God wanted. These kings and these pharaohs would do it opposite, and we see that all throughout history. And back in the day in the ancient of times, the kings would take these brass bowls and they would polish the brass bowls to a mirror shine. And then they would fill the bowls full of water with this mirrored bottom in it. And it's theorized that they used uh, different types of hallucinogens, drugs, in their uh, ceremonies when they would do this. Now, uh, I haven't seen any detailed research to really back that up. Uh, but with what they would do with these brass bowls, it would it would seem to coincide, you know. And they would peer into these brass bowls, and they would begin to start getting visions. They would summon demons and spirits, demonic entities that possess these kings and these these rulers, and the devil would whether the devil would enter into them or just be in constant contact with them, the devil was taking the reins and the devil was taking control. And then the the kings and rulers, the people would turn their backs on God because that's the way the kings would uh, tell them to do. As time went on, they, they transitioned from the polished brass bowl to what was called a scrying mirror, and that's scrying. It's just uh, crying with an S in front of it, a scrying mirror. And all that simply was was just a black mirror. And they would do the same technique. I mean, they would peer into this black mirror, and they would summon up demonic entities and rinse, lather, and repeat. But the black mirror was the, the I guess you could say the one that won out the most because it was what was used uh, a great length throughout history. Matter of fact, when we watch, I believe it's Snow White, the cartoon, I believe it's that cartoon where we see that whatever, I've never seen it, but the, the one that peers into the black mirror and says, mirror, mirror on the wall, who's the fairest of them all, and then this spirit appears in the mirror so this is nothing new this has been going on throughout history and you ask yourselves well is it going on today well yeah it is in 2020 it is the only difference is instead of the king or the ruler housing the black mirror and being the one that peers into it and then telling the people how to live, how to act. Today in 2020, each 
individual person now carries around this black mirror in their pocket. If you'll look at your cell phone when it's off or the screen's closed, it's a black mirror. Now, you may sit there and laugh and be like, oh, okay, you're, little, you're, you're reaching here. <laughs> We've got black mirrors now sitting on our counters at home that we peer into for hours. Now, uh, a lot of us don't take hallucinogenic drugs as we peer into this mirror, but nonetheless, we still peer into this black mirror. Now, back when the transition from the brass bowls to the black mirrors happened in, in the ancient of days, once the black mirror became popular, they actually said, they actually admitted to the fact that they were channeling these spirits so that they could be programmed. And in 2020, when we stare and peer into our black mirrors that we have sitting on our shelves or in our pockets, what do we do? We go to our favorite channel so that we can watch our program. And what are we seeing in our black mirrors today? Are we seeing things that are godly? Are we seeing things that are wholesome? Maybe maybe there are certain channels. Maybe every now and then you may go to PBS and see a documentary on something that's that's you know true and wholesome. But for the most part, it's drama, it's anxiety, it's hatred, it's division, it's violence, it's blood, it's guts, and it's deception. It's deception. I was talking to a friend of mine a while back. We were talking about what made the Jews willingly walk onto the trains when they went to their execution back in the 40s. And he reminded me that uh, one thing that Hitler did was that Hitler played – this repetitive beat and this repetitive tone over loudspeakers while he was telling the people, just get on the train because y'all don't have a life here. Nobody's taking your money, and we know of a place on the other side of town or on the other side of Germany that's going to receive you in. There's jobs there and blah, blah, blah. Telling the people this while at the same time in the background there was – Repetitive beats and repetitive tones being played. And then we got to thinking. Now, I know many of you are probably around my age, unless, of course, you're, you're Steve. He's a little bit older than I am. <laughs> but back in our day, we actually had a true definition of the word genre when it came to music. I mean – if somebody said, let's listen to rock, it was very identifiable when you heard it. If somebody said, let's listen to blues, it was very identifiable if you heard it. If you wanted to listen to soft rock or love songs, it was very identifiable when you hear it. And they were easily distinguished between each genre. But today in 2020... The country music, the pop music, the rap music, it all sounds the same now. I know that they still call it different genres, but if you'll just sit back and take a bird's eye view, for the most part, country songs aren't the twangy type of music it once was. It's now turned into pop. Pop's kind of taken on the role of rock and rap. And, and in 2020, they've all just kind of seemed to have intermingled with each other. To me, anyway, call me an old fuddy-duddy, but to me, anyway, it appears that I cannot distinguish. I mean, I can when I hear it just because I recognize who the artist is, so I know that's country. Okay? But... Had I not known the artist, I couldn't tell you what genre of music it was because it's all just 
that rap repetitive beat, repetitive tones over and over and over. So let's throw that into the mix. As we peer into our black mirrors today, let's throw into the mix the fact that we're hearing this repetitive beat and repetitive tone over and over while we are being programmed by our channel. And then we look at society today. Many of us here on the line, we can remember 20 years ago, this America did not look anything like this. And I'm sure we could talk to our, our grandparents. And it definitely was not like it was back then. But we are not living in an America that we were in 20 years. We're not living in an America that we were in five years ago. And this is just my opinion, but I attribute that to our black scrying mirrors that Satan has used to indoctrinate us to turn from godly ways and start living the way Satan wants us to live. We saw shows of kids back-talking parents. We started seeing shows of how you shouldn't discipline your parents or you shouldn't discipline your children. And then we saw shows that were glorifying or actually they were kind of gradually implementing per perversion, sexual immorality, homosexuality and such. Gradually filtering that in through the years and now it's just on every commercial, just about every TV show now. Homosexuality is just part of the way of life, and it's accepted. Now, Netflix, they have a movie where they are portraying Jesus as gay. They have controversy now over a show that they're showing called Cuties that has like 10 to 12-year-old girls dressed provocatively, gyrating on stage. And a lot of people feel that that's gone way too far, which it has, and they're speaking out about it. But my point is, friends, if we understand how they have been using the black mirrors throughout societies, and if we can understand that we carry one in our pocket now, and we understand how they just gradually start filtering in these things till it becomes the normal, and now they're filtering in us looking upon children in this way, yeah, people are speaking out about it. But what's going to happen in five or six years once the programming continues and pedophilia then becomes the norm just like homosexuality has? You'd ask yourself, well, that's never going to happen. Really? Now, I am just, uh, I know we're on the radio here, but a show of hands, how many of you said that electronic logs would never happen? Yet, here we sit. So my point of, of basically bringing you to the beach of what I want to speak on tonight is, We have been purposely manipulated, purposely deceived, lied to, confused. There's chaos. And now with this disease, this COVID-19, now we're not even trusting our, our own fellow man. You. You can't even get near someone now that you don't know because they'll freak out. These these black mirrors have, have taught society to not even trust their fellow man. So have you – and I'm not here to debate whether or not the disease is real or how bad it is. That's That's not my purpose here. My purpose here is what are they doing with it? It's a further divide. It's further confusion because you hear so many numbers from one side, so many numbers from another side, but yet we've got these videos from these citizens reporters that shows that they're lying about certain hospitals and on and on and on and go. But yet, interestingly enough, when this first came out, they just suggested that you wear masks. And 
I, you know, for the most part, I'd say 20, 30 percent of people wear the mask. And then these tyrannical governors and mayors mandated people to wear a mask. And it probably went up to 50 percent of the people, maybe 60 percent wearing the mask. And then they strung that along. Keep in mind now, they just said it was only going to be for 14 days. But they've strung it along for six months. And now, to prove my point, the governors and the mayors are removing their mask mandate. And now, 70 to 80% of the people are wearing masks. And you ask yourself, why? Why? And people that are being interviewed now, um, if you just watch some of the clips, citizens reporters have walked up to them and said, well, the mandates have been lifted. Um, it's obvious that the death rate has really plummeted. Why are you wearing a mask? And they say, because the mask makes me feel safe. The mask makes me feel safe. Ha have you seen some of the commercials? Biden's got a commercial out there now. And I'm not here to talk politics, but but there's commercials now in between our TV shows. It's, oh, do your part for society. Wear a mask. Wear a mask. Oh, you know, you're helping your fellow man. It's for the greater good. And, again, I'm not here to argue about masks. I'm just saying that we do not realize that we are being programmed. I am. And I refuse to wear a mask. I haven't worn a mask for that very reason. Now, I've gone into many places where they've told me I've had to, and I say, no, I do not. I, under my spiritual belief, in, in my walk with God, face coverings is not part of my religion. Now, in my religion, I am told that we are not to worship the way the pagans do, and I know of a pagan religion that worships by covering their face. So my spiritual belief, covering my face in my everyday walk of life, when I worship God everywhere I go every day, I'm not going to worship like the pagans do. And that's exactly what this is. Did you know that the Arabs 2,300 years ago, they found out that if you make someone cover their nose and their mouth, that it dehumanizes them, and it causes them to submit. That's why in their belief that they have to submit to all of the women, have to submit to the man. That's why they force the women to cover their face. It dehumanizes, and it forces them to submit. So, again, I'm not here to argue about COVID or mask or any of that. I'm just saying that along with our programming from our black mirrors, and along with our music that is that repetitive beat with that repetitive tone, and now with the dehumanization of wearing these masks, the powers that be have a submissive populace that don't know their 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 rights or their religious beliefs from a hole in the ground. So with all that being said, we have this election coming up, and I'm not here to speak politics, but we have one side here that's almost a sure thing to win, and if this sure thing wins, we have the other side that has now put out a warning that I'm going to get into here in just a moment because you all need to know what we're about to walk into. But then you have this other side doing all this mail-in voting to try to throw chaos, confusion into an election. Who is the author of confusion? Who is the author of lies? We have this other side trying to throw a monkey wrench in the gearing of this nation so that they can take back power that they have lost. I'm going to share some. I, I'm not going to get political, but I just need to share one thing that I've shared on my show. We have a vice president 
candidate that's running under Biden. Her name is Kamala Harris. You can go look at her track record and see what she's all about. That's fine with me, but there was an ancient Hindu goddess by the name of Kamala Tamika. And this ancient Hindu goddess, Kamala Tamika, she was the goddess of finances. But she was also sister to Shiva, who is the destroyer. And Kamala was also not only the goddess of finances, but she was the goddess of, dis of destruction and rebirth. And how many times have we seen Kamala Harris, whether she's in a president, vice presidential debate or just being interviewed on, on a, a news network, she is the goddess. The actual Kamala Tamika is the goddess of destruction and rebirth. And every time that woman opens her mouth in an interview, she wants to tear something down and then rebuild it into this new way. She wants to rid society of a police force that's been working well over 240 years. She wants to scrap that, but she wants to rebirth this citizen's patrol. She wants to take a nation that's been working themselves to death and building this nation on blood, sweat, and tears. She wants to get rid of that, and she wants to rebirth this everybody gets the same paycheck for doing nothing. She wants to, to get rid of, of the, the building of the buildings and the, and the technological advances and the, and the airplanes and the vehicles. She wants to get rid of all that, and she wants to rebirth this new Green Deal. So if we understand from a historical setting what has been taking place back then, it will open our eyes to what we're seeing now and why and who is responsible. So again, today when I was perusing through Facebook, I, uh, I stumbled across that little, that little verse. And, and and I'm glad that I put it on Facebook. But what struck me as uh, as odd is is what I said before I posted the verse. I said, "It's time to man up, church, and be bold. Do not fear this evil. The truth is now being revealed. Again, not one sparrow falls to the ground outside of the will of God." I was paraphrasing. That's that's not exactly word for word what that verse says, but that's what it means. God, God is in full control, okay? And if you go to Matthew chapter 10, where that, that verse is, is written, you're going to see there it says, do not, do not fear man. Do not fear man. It also says, do not fear man that can just take your body. You need to fear the one that can take your body and your soul. And that's very powerful because we have got some things on the horizon, folks. We've got a mark of the beast that's rearing its ugly head. And as of right now, there's speculation. There's, there's ideas of what it could be. But with this vaccine that they're trying to create, this vaccine is looking like it could be the precursor to that very thing because they're trying to make it mandatory to where if you don't take the vaccine, you don't do anything. You don't work. You don't eat. You don't go to school. You don't do any of the things that you normally do. See, they are conditioning you now to get used to being locked down. They're conditioning you to being used to not being able to do certain things. Once you grow accustomed to that, while you're wearing your mask and you're dehumanizing yourself and you are submitting, then when they usher in the hard stuff along with the vaccine to where you are going to lose just about everything unless you submit and take the vaccine, you're already going to be conditioned. You know, Jeremiah 12 I know everybody that knows me, I, I talk about Jeremiah 12 all the time, but maybe there's a purpose. Because Jeremiah keeps 
asking God, just as Habakkuk did in Habakkuk chapter 1, he says, God, why are the wicked always prospering? How come I am trying to do everything that I can do that's right, but yet I'm the one who is uh, cast away, and it's the wicked that always prosper? Why is that? And God's answer to Jeremiah and Habakkuk is strikingly, I don't want to say eerie because nothing from God is eerie, but it's, it's, it's resonant. I think that's a good word to use. Because God told Jeremiah, look, if you're getting worn out running the foot race with the men, how are you going to run the races with the horses? Basically, paraphrasing, if you're going to get worn down running in the open field with no resistance, how are you going to manage when you get in the thickets down along the, the Jordan? But So basically what it means is, you know, I know we've been seeing all kinds of things go awry right now, but, man, if we let it, if we let it get us down now, when the hard stuff comes, how are we going to manage that? Because we haven't even seen hard times, hard stuff yet, but we're going to. But it's his answer to Habakkuk where he says, I'm going to deal with this. I'm going to deal with it in my time. I'm paraphrasing. I'm going to deal with it my way. I'm going to deal with it in my time. And when it had, even if I told you what I was going to do, you wouldn't believe it. That's how amazing it's going to be. So we have two examples here of the wicked prospering and God giving us an answer today in 2020 of how we can deal with this. And we are to not fear. Friends, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but the Antifa and BLM group that it's already been proven is being funded by George Soros and all of the organizations that he is in charge of, funneling money through this organization, funneling money through that organization, you know, letting these organizations launder the money so it'll be hard to track. Going into Antifa and BLM, the latest riot that they did up there in Louisville the other day, video proof. They had a U-Haul that pulled up in a back alley. The back door opens up, and all these weapons and shields were loaded in the back and being distributed out to the so-called rioters. So this is a purposed group. It's a purposed event, and our media is telling us <clears throat> There's no riots going on. It's peaceful protest mostly. Now, there are a few fires. Hey, but they're being started by white supremacists. White supremacists are the ones we need to be looking at here. And I've got a, daughter, a stepdaughter that's like in her 20s, and it does not matter what she sees. She could be standing in the middle of the street and see something with her own eyes. And if she goes home and watches the news and the news media tells her something different than what she saw, she's going to believe the news media versus what she saw. This is how brainwashed this generation is. So this group, this, this Antifa BLM group, they are putting out, whether it's propaganda or not, I don't know, but we need to be aware of this, that if Donald Trump wins the election, it's going to be all-out chaos everywhere. The inner cities, metropolitan cities, guaranteed, but they said they're coming out into the suburbs, and they're just going to start shooting people. Shooting people. They're going to try to create as much unrest as they can because they're, they're hoping to get Trump to call out the military, and then when that happens, then it's going to be all-out martial law and it's it's bad days ahead. Now, is this just fear tactics from the other side to try to – and when I say the other side, I'm not being political. I'm meaning from the devil. Are they just trying to keep us rattled? If Donald Trump does win, they're not really going to do that. They just want to freak people out. 
So let me ask you a question. With the amount of people now that are submitting to a mask, cowering to a mandate that is not a law, because that is not how our country operates, one man cannot just create a law that everybody must follow. That's not how our country works. There's checks and balances, process that has to that these things have to go through in order to become a law before it can be enforced. But see, Hosea 4 or 6 tells us that we're destroyed due to lack of knowledge. We're, we're, we're losing that. So, so we follow the crowd at chow time, and we do as we're told from an entity in this world that is not of God. Why are we following the ways of the devil so easily, and it's so hard for us to follow the way of God? I've never understood that. I mean, call me old school, okay? I don't know, but <clears throat> everything that God is, the devil's opposite. God's about life children the devil wants to take the life of a child okay <laughs> you know god's about love the devil's about hate god's about peace the devil's about confusion and everything of god is so hard for people but man they'll go running like the third monkey on the ramp from the ark toward what the devil has to offer and so in one aspect What's coming down the pike, if this is true, with the threat that's coming from Antifa, then we deserve it. We deserve it because we've closed our churches when the disease hit. This mandate made the churches close but kept the liquor stores and the abortion clinics open because they were essential, but crying out to God is not. And I've been harping on the closing of the church from day one, and I will not stop. That you want to talk about, you want to talk about removing the hand of God's protection off of this nation a little bit. That 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 did quite a bit. I know, I've heard the arguments that they say, well, we have our service online. That's great. That's not the point here. The point is we have examples in the Bible from Daniel and the lion's den and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego on the furnace that, you know, sometimes it's God first. We know he's not going to deliver us from our punishment, but he will deliver us while we're enduring it. That's been proven. He did it for Daniel. He did it for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So anyway, I didn't. I don't mean to just ramble on and, and – and get you off kilter here. I want to pull you back to the subject. Are you saved? How well do you know God? Are you in a relationship with God? Or do you just think about him ever so often? If a car pulls out in front of you and you didn't hit it, you're, you say, oh, thank you, thank you, Jesus. And that's the only prayer you pray in a day. Have you lost a little bit of grip on the garment of Christ? As 38 Special said, are, are you holding on loosely, but you, but you don't let go? You know? Folks, we need to wrap our arms around the blood of Christ. And we need to grab it like we're choking, and it's oxygen, because that's exactly what it is. So... God tells us that not one single single sparrow will hit the ground unless it was God's will that it happened. One tiny little sparrow. With everything in this world, God tells us that that one tiny little sparrow is not going to hit the ground unless I want it to. That's powerful. That's powerful because we 
here, out here on the roads. We don't know where we're going to be if this type of chaos ensues. We don't know if we're going to be in one of these major cities. We don't know if we're going to be at even at home with our families to protect them if it does. Folks, you want to talk about the next couple of weeks, us running blind as a bat, especially us out here on the road. That's the way we're going to be running. But it's the faith in Jesus Christ. Now, I'm not talking about, yeah, I believe in Jesus. <laughs> I'm talking about rooted faith. I'm talking about the faith that Daniel had. I'm talking about the faith that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had. When the king said, you bow, and they said, we're not bowing. We only bow to one, and it ain't you. Well, we're going to turn the heat up in the furnace, and we're going to throw you in there. What do you got to say about that? Well, so be it. So be it. Throw it toss us in there. You know, if we get burned up, then it's God's will, but I'm not really worried about what's going to happen to me now. I'm worried about what's going to happen to me when I face God. Do we have that degree of faith right now in this world? I wanted to kind of open up with showing you how the devil has interceded into our life for so many years. that We just did not even put two and two together to recognize it. You know, um, when this destruction came upon the nation of Moab, Isaiah 15, you know, Moab was a, a, a prominent country. Moab was rich. They were smart. They had, the, they had the mightiest military. Does that sound familiar? Of a nation we have today. Um, but... They had turned from God, and God was starting to bring his judgment. And Isaiah says that they ran to their high places. They ran to their idols. And if we look back over, you know, say the last five years with all the tornadoes and floods and hurricanes, and Harvey, you know, the flood Harvey in Texas, what did we do? Did 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 we act like we did the day after 9-11 and, and put our flags out on all of our porches and we were just hugging people we didn't even know because we knew that they were our brother and sister? Did, did we treat these type of things, and when God brought these judgments, did we treat them like that, or did we run to our high places? Did we run to our idols? And if you, if you translate high places from that time in the Old Testament, it was that. It was their idols. It was that which kept them entertained. It was that which they worshipped above God. Their high places. If we were to put that in perspective today, our high places today would be Hollywood. It would be our professional sports teams. You know, it'd be our video games. It would be, it would be whatever we put above God. But that would be considered our high places. And when these things happen to us in this nation. Did we run to God and repent and beg for his mercy and then go help our fellow brothers? Or did we run to the movie because the latest Hollywood flick was coming out and and it was it was sanctioned to make millions of dollars and you wanted to be one of the first ones to get a ticket? Did did we pray for those in Houston? Did we did we reach out to them? Did we cry out to God for his mercy? And repent for this nation when we saw Houston get flooded, or did we switch professional football teams and watch them for a while until they could get the Astro Dome cleaned up so we could go back watching the Oilers? We ran to our high places. And and if you look in Moab and you look in all these other nations where Basically, the same thing happened, regardless of what judgment story you read. They they pretty much, when it begins, they, they run to their high places. Uh, you know, just like when the plagues hit Egypt. Boom. What did the Pharaoh say? <clears throat> well, we got idols. We got these gods that's going to protect you. And what happened? These idols, these gods turned on the people because they didn't, they didn't protect them. 
<laughs> they couldn't protect them. They, they're not they're not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The high places up in Moab, it, they, they eventually turned on the people. And what are our idols today doing to us as Americans? What are our idols doing today as, as the culture in our nation? Are they not turning on us now? Are they not allowing true patriotism, the love of family, be exhibited in their sanctuaries, in their in their worship places, their astrodomes and whatnot? No. Now, if anything, they want to silence the, the, the patriotic culture of true Americanism, and they want to spew out what this globalist beast that is rising wants, whether it be the NFL, NASCAR. They're all doing it. Our idols are turning on us, folks. And if we read these judgment stories all throughout the Bible, we see a pattern that happens the same over and over and over. So we are basically being threatened with our lives now after this election. We've been seeing the tornadoes and the floods and the fires. We've been seeing all the judgments that God's been casting out. Now we're seeing the pestilence with the COVID. And again, I'm not here to argue whether it's real or not. What has it caused? This pestilence, this disease, this judgment that God has cast upon this nation, we have lost our constitutional rights because of it. We have lost our ability to unite in fellowship with our brothers and sisters. We have lost the right to worship God as we are commanded to do. So whether or not this disease is real, it's killed a whole lot more than just human life. And then we look upon all of these things. Now our idols are turning on us. And this is why I wanted to speak about what I wanted to tonight, because the next stage in judgment, folks, is God then always sends an army in on us, as he did in Moab. He sent the army into Moab. The army was sent into Nineveh, and God judged Nineveh. Over and over, God is sending the army. And interestingly enough, in the in the in the nation of Moab, when God sent the armies into Moab, He said, "Even you who try to escape, I will send the lions after." So, folks, here we sit. We've got a. We've got a, a very dangerous situation taking shape. And I, I'm not sitting here saying that we ought to be afraid and we ought to do this. We ought to, you know, I'm just telling you, you need to be alert. You need to be alert because with the warnings that are coming from these groups, we've already seen what they've done this past summer. But now they're just openly telling, they're, they're just going to start shooting everybody if Trump wins. So going back to the judgments, the next stage being God sending armies in on the population. We know back in those days that, you know, it was actual armies. It was either the Babylonians or the Assyrians. I mean, a well-organized militia that came in on these nations. But today, China has told their military to start preparing for war. I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but Joe Biden and Hunter Biden has had some information come out that has literally nailed them to the wall with treason, corruption, you name it, the proof is out there. And Satan and his minions, the media and social media, are silencing 
and censoring this information, and the left-wing news media are laughing, saying that it's a nothing burger when it's the truth. So is anything going to be done about this? Is is Trump and our Congress going to take this up and treat it as such? Is everything that we've been hearing from from uh, the one side, if you follow Q, where it's like, oh, everybody's going to be getting arrested, everybody's going to be blah, blah, blah. Well, how many times have we had this happen when 100% raw proof evidence comes out on these people and nothing happens? Well, we've got raw, uncensored truth coming out about Biden and Hunter, but I don't see Biden in jail. If any, if any one of us on this on this program right now was to drive down the road with one single light out on our trailer, man, we'll have a SWAT team tracking us down within minutes. But these people do what they do, cr- commit treason, and, and and they walk free. So it does it does lead me to question God. Why do the wicked always prosper? But folks, the the points that I wanted to make here, I know I'm all over the place, but there is not one sparrow that will hit the ground unless God decides that it's going to. As we walk out into this evil world with the things that are about to be unleashed upon us, we are to have no fear. God did not give us a spirit of fear. He tells us, do not fear man, but fear the one that can rob your body and your soul. So we continue to watch our news, and as things begin to escalate, we'll be able to tell. We'll be able to tell which direction this is going to go. But tonight, you have to ask yourself, if I were to die tonight, where am I going to spend eternity? Where am I going to spend? Because, you know, God, if you've only been serving God a little bit, he's not just going to give you a little bit of heaven, okay? (laughs) It's either all or none. And it's the same way in following him. You either follow him or you're following the devil. If you love me, you will obey my commandments. Do not try to please these people in this world, friends. Don't. Because if you try to please man in this world, you're unpleasing to God. We were not born to fit in with this society, folks. We were born to stand out. God tells us, do not be, you're in this world, but do not be of it. Don't get roped in to this technological Deceit that is taking place on our black mirrors today. Look to the Almighty. Search the words in the Scripture. Pray, repent, and give your life back to Jesus Christ. I know that. I know that we hear this all the time, but. But. We're going to we're going to have a decision to make in the coming days. I don't know if I don't know if it's going to be the vaccine or I don't know if it's just going to be the all out mark of the beast. I will I will I will share with you my opinion, okay? I believe the Antichrist is alive and well today. I do not know who it is. I don't even speculate who it could be because I don't know. But we see the Antichrist spirit and the lawlessness at work right now. So my opinion is I could see, and whether it's due to this election or whether it's just later on down the road, I don't know. But I can see all-out chaos breaking out, and there be somebody that will stand up and stop it all. And he would be revered as, or this, this person would be revered as. Christ, which we would know would be the Antichrist, 
bowl is this vaccine and the mark of the beast around the corner. I, I can I can just see it all forming. Okay, I don't know how it's going to play out, but I'm just saying. Are you submitting to this globalist beast that is rising, the mark, the the antichrist spirit that's rising? Are you submitting to it, or are you submitting to God? Because if you're easy to submit to the beast system now, you're never going to make it into heaven, folks. You're just not. God said, if you're if if you're getting bogged down, if you're getting worn out running the foot race with men, the easy part, if you're failing in the easy part, then how are you going to run the race with the horses? How are you going to turn from this globalist beast once it starts getting hard and you don't have food to eat or you don't have clothes to wear or you don't have money to, to, to pay your bills? This is why we need to have rooted faith in Christ and walk in his footprints because he has already walked our path. That's why we need to stay in our stay in his footprints. And we have to understand as long as we are doing that, anything that happens to us is because God allowed it. Because God allowed it. As he told us, not one sparrow hits the ground unless I okay it. Well, I thank you, friends, for allowing me to speak with you. That kind of closes what I have to say tonight, Steve. And uh, I greatly appreciate you letting me be a part. I know it's kind of a little different from what I normally talk about, but I, this has just been on my spirit this week, man, you know. And, and I... I know what I wanted to say. I, I, I hope it wasn't confusing. I hope y'all were able to understand it. No, I thought it was pretty awesome. You know, I mean, I'm in 100% agreement with you, you know, especially when you was talking about, you know, there's so many things that are going on. And, you know, we look at the prophecies and we see what's going on in current events. And you see how a lot of it is lining up. And, and of course, there's going to be a lot that are going to say, you know, that, you know, you're misinterpreting or, you know, that's not really what it meant or, you know, whatever it might be, you know, and, and we know that the word of God is foolishness to those who don't know them. So they're not understanding it in the first place. But with all the things that are going on in the world and all the chaoticness and, you know, just uh, the crime and, and, the, and like you said, the immoralities and, you know, that, that has come. Well, we know the scripture. It says what's spoken of good will be spoken as evil and what is spoken as evil will be spoken as good. And we see that happening. It, it, it isn't anything that just started last week. This has been oncoming right. for quite some time. But there was one thing that that really grabs a hold. Well, a couple of things. One, God is in control of all this. God knew this before the foundation of the earth. He said, I'll never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you, and no man can pluck you out of my hand. No weapon formed against you will prosper, and I even cause your enemies to be at peace with us. You know, that's what the Word of God says. But here's the thing. He says that to his children. And like you were saying, all these things really, you know, and, and I'm not quoting you exact, of course, but all these things are not as important as your personal salvation. Because at the end of the day, when you stand before an almighty God, you're going to hear one of two things. You're going to hear, depart from me, you're doers of iniquity, and I don't know you. Or you're going to hear, come in, my good and faithful servants, for you have ran your race. You know, with all the things that are going on, the only protection we have is God. We can't put our faith and our trust in man. Man's going to lie to you. Man's going to rip you off. He's going to stab you in the back, and he's going to throw you in the gutter. But it's God that's going to sustain you. And it's God that is going to continue to, uh, you know, supply you. And so, you know, everything that you spoke here tonight, <clears throat> excuse me, was good. And it was things that we have to look at and, and, and be aware of what's going on around us and not pay attention to, like you said, the high places, not paying attention to, you know, what, what you're the created idol that you have created for yourself. But it's that knowing 
um, without any doubt that if something happened to you, that you would hear, come in my good and faithful servant. That is, you know me. Uh, I mean, and, and I think each and every one of us are in agreement. That's about the most important thing that there is, is your personal salvation. Amen. <coughs> well, if anybody Good has, work, go, I was just going to say, if anybody has any questions, jump in there. Yep, I, I unmuted us over here, so just go, go ahead if you had anything. Oh, well, like always, I know, I know how Greg is. He's, it's always awesome what he's got to say. You know, but I mean, I, I'm in total agreement with you on the, you know, with a lot of things that's going on in this world, and, and you know, and people are turning the blind eye to. You know, I just read an article from my hometown. Just read an article earlier that the drug task force, uh, which goes. For the, the four surrounding counties where I live, just uh, seized over, I can't remember the amount of uh, marijuana plus uh, THC, which had been coming from a different state, and they have been putting the THC into uh, gummy bears and gummy worms and all that. And, give them, distribute them to kids at schools, and people commented on there, that's all you have to do, there's other crimes out there, and you want to take people down for marijuana and stuff, it's mm -hmm. not about them doing the kids, you know, they're just, it, uh, I read that, and it just floored me, how people are acting, I mean, they're giving it to our kids at school. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the way this world is. The way it's, it's, it's you know, it's becoming, uh, it's, uh, I don't want to shut up because it makes me mad. But, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, man. Oh, but good word, brother. Well, thank you, brother. Word, I, yeah, I, uh, I, 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 well, I see, I had a, uh, I had a show that I had Brother Paul Dixon on about two well, was three weeks ago now, and uh, man, it was it was one of the best shows that, that I have ever done. Uh, n n you know, not that I'm not trying to feather my cap. I'm just saying with the information that Paul brought to the program and the way it just all fell into place, and we went way deep into the ancient. Uh, yeah, and uh, I heart pulled it and wouldn't let it go up. And they wouldn't let it go on the Christian Truckers Network either. And I tried to manually put it up, uh, and it still wouldn't go. So, you know, these, these are the battles that we're facing, you know. And when you try to get information out and it gets blocked like that, it, it gets frustrating, you know. But we can't, we can't, we, you know, we can't let it get us down. We just have to. Keep on keeping on because God is in control. That's what I'm saying. Obviously, God allowed Satan to pull that one down for some reason. Who knows? You know, it may be a show that, that God don't want nobody to hear now. And a year from now, he'll put the, the spirit in me. Won't you try to load that show again? You know what I'm saying? So uh, we, can, we can't get frustrated. That's why I say, you know, when God said, that not even a single sparrow is going to hit the ground unless I say it does. Um, right. We cannot let right. Satan steal that thunder from us. We cannot let Satan pull our sights off of Christ in that way, okay? And right. and that was kind of right. the, the point message I was trying to get across tonight. When things happen, right. understand... God allows them to happen, and he allows it for a reason. He knows more than we do. He can see way well ahead in the future further than we can. And uh, we just have to trust in him. Trust in him when these type of things happen. Amen. 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 Yep. Yeah, and while you was talking, uh, I Googled uh, the... Uh, meaning for Kabbalah and it's a lotus or pale red and a lotus 
no, <laughs> the, the Greek <laughs> myth- yeah, the Greek mythology, a legendary plant whose fruit induces a dreamy forgetfulness and an unwillingness to be pardoned. Well, sounds like Biden and the Democrat Party, don't it? <laughs> <laughs> that's what, that's yeah. That's why I said that. That's just, yeah. That's why I put that. Yeah, I'm, I'm like, yeah. I said I got to tell him that. <laughs> uh, wow. A Lotus, and he doesn't mean the car. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. <laughs> right. Right. Amen, yeah, amen. Yeah, Lotus is uh, pale red. Well, brother, we do. I thought maybe Go it ahead, was Ty. like a grasshopper, the Lotus, the Lotus grasshopper. I thought it was, a, ain't that the. Uh, I thought those were locusts. Ain't that what, uh, what are they? Locusts. Locusts, there you go. Okay, yep, yep. yep. All, all depends on, you know, it's the. Uh, King James Version or NLT, you know? Or what part of the Ohio <laughs> River? <laughs> what part of the Ohio River you yeah, live yeah, on? Yeah. Or what part of the Mississippi? <laughs> North or south of I-80? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Locust. There you go. Yep. That's, uh, I was close, though. Right church, wrong pew. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, you had the L right. <laughs> yeah, had the L-O right. And the us. <laughs> I thought that was pretty interesting, though. Um, yeah, it is. You know, it's amazing how you, you know, as you were saying, you know, you get programmed. And uh, we see it each and every day. And that's that's the scary part of it. And most of it, you're, you're programming yourself. You're allowing it to happen. You're getting into the same thing uh, and, and following the same agenda. Mm-hmm. So, Greg, you you made a comment um, about what the the other side has that um, BLM and Antifa and all them that that they've they've made the statement that if Trump wins, they're gonna they're going to create all out war within the borders of our country. Um. Do you, do you feel that it would be any different than if if Biden happens to win? Um, the only difference is that they would be in control. The way I see it, the only difference would be if Biden wins that they would they would have a uh, a friend in the White House per se, and they would meet be met with no resistance. Versus if if um, President Trump retains his office, that they're going to be met with really matter or no. Okay, this is this is just my opinion. Um, yep, nope, I know. I, I, you know, if Trump wins, we know what's going to happen. Now, whether or not they're going to start going around shooting people just on the street at random, I don't know. But we do know they're Practices such as the mail in ballots when there's only three people You know, if they, if they try to take it by nefarious forces and in ways, 